Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm back. 6.30 here in California time. I spent three and a half hours yesterday in this chair. I didn't move last night. And I was editing a Wikipedia page. I was rewriting a Wikipedia page. And I'm going to finish it off tonight. I think it's going to take a couple hours. I'm not sure. I didn't re I didn't read everything. I could have pre-read the articles and it'd make it a lot faster, but I, I didn't. I read like one article. And I think we're going to be able to get this thing finished pretty darn quick. So just a quick recap of what page I'm working on and how this works. I picked a stub. That is a page that is a, a page that is stubby. In other words, it's labeled as a stub. It hasn't been... Um, um, it wasn't completely finished is the way they look at it. Hold on a second. Hold this up so I can see any comments you guys make. Yeah, so there you are. I can see you on the screen over here and I can see your comments you might make. All two of you. <laughs> so um, there's something really exciting that's going to be happening tonight. And I don't want to say anything until it happens. Um, probably about three hours from now something like that i got a, a text message and i was asking the person well hurry it up and it isn't ufo related but um, anyway i'm waiting for that to happen and so i had actually I was planning to come over to my computer to listen to it and i can't because it's not out yet so let's just get this wikipedia page finished my team has come out with a couple really amazing Wikipedia pages in the last couple of days. I don't want to show you what they are because if I do, then it's possible somebody could figure out who the editors are and I don't have their permission to release who they are. So that's why I don't say anything about Wikipedia pages anymore, like what we wrote. But trust me, we're still getting work done. You have to be in the cabal, the secret cabal, to know what all we're doing these days because, you know, there's a lot of these... Um, very odd people out there. I had it using my real username is Susan Gerbeck. Well, it's S Gerbeck. Everything's transparent on Wikipedia. So when people say that we're trying to hide something, I, I, I don't even know where they're getting this. It's, it's, it's just so bizarre because everything's transparent, which is why I'm not telling you what pages my team has done. Only the team knows what other people have edited and my work is public i mean i'm as public as you can be i tell people what i do and i like i say my edit history is public my name is public so hiding something is just silly and the accounts that are attacking me are usually from anonymous places so apparently they're going nuts over on twitter i zitter i haven't looked in at least 24 hours i'm not really interested anymore it was just getting so mundane with people saying they had a change.org petition oh check out the new skeptic zone episode god what episode are we on now 802 check it out the the beginning part of it richard saunders skeptic zone he talks about here I'll, let me put the link in the chat here the chat on my facebook page and he talks about what's been going on and how people are so upset. Oh my gosh, the UFO community is so upset. And the Wikipedia page I'm rewriting is a UFO page. So this always makes it very interesting. And it is in 1984 Hudson Valley UFO sightings. You can see this. Um, actually, you can't. You can see the Wikipedia page as it exists. And I'll show it to you right now. Here's what the UFO page looks like at this second. Which screen do I share it to? I've got like six choices here. So here's the Hudson Valley UFO sightings, 1984 Wikipedia page as it exists. It's called a stub. See this little thing down here? It's called a stub. And it has five citations. Now this has been rewritten in about, I think, 2023. And they did an okay job the the citations look pretty good and they did a lot of the work of finding citations so i don't have to worry about it too much but but when you're writing a wikipedia page or i should say rewriting a wikipedia page 
you you have to well we all have our own style of how we rewrite the order we do it in the way we do it in some people do all their research and all their reading all their note taking and then they get into the page i don't do it that way and if you want to watch the video it's up on my facebook page i probably put it up on my youtube page and it's three and a half hours long and it is i don't know to some of you guys it's probably like watching paint dry i find it interesting but you know, I make mistakes and typos and it's really hard to watch somebody type. stuff. It's kind of weird. So this is the Wikipedia page we're rewriting. And take a look at that five citations and about how long it is. And here is where we are as of last night. So we have an info box now. Just ignore this part right up here. And these are all citations that I haven't used yet. I will probably change this lead. That's the, the beginning part of a Wikipedia article. And now it has event, eyewitness reports, investigation, UFO research group response in the media, further reading, external links, see also, and references. We're at eight references right now. Two of these references are these two books right here, which are not considered reliable sources. So I can't use them as citations in the body of the article. The rules for paranormal or fringe topics are, are stricter than they would be for like maybe a biography or, um, I don't know, like a, just think of it this way. So if there was a biography on a, a U.S. president and it was written by somebody who has a lot of journalistic integrity, somebody who's known for uh, being a researcher um, or being published in a place that is going to make hold you accountable for what you say in that book, then we could use that book on Wikipedia because it has journalistic integrity. But if the book that is being um, used for the U.S. president is self-published, there's no editor, um, it is from an unknown author who's not necessarily a scholar or they're making claims like, oh, I don't know, things like that are paranormal or fringe as being accurate. Let's say like Abraham Lincoln fought vampires, okay? Or uh, George Washington hung out with Bigfoot. So if they're making those kinds of claims in the books and there's not scholarly journalistic integrity, then those can't be used on a Wikipedia page. And I guess that's what's going on here with these other articles these other two books. Now I put these two books and maybe there's more I'll find in the further reading section. And it's up for the person who's the individual who's reading the Wikipedia page if they want to read these books. But I cannot use them as citations in the book, in the article, not only because they are not considered reliable sources, but because I don't own the books. So I, I can't, I don't have them. So if I don't have them, how do I know it's written in it? So, and I'm not going to read a book just so I can write a Wikipedia page. I'd read a few pages out of a book, but so this is where we are. And we're really almost done because all I have left is these citations here at the top, but I'm going to go through one at a time. I have these in order of publication and these are newspaper articles mostly. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to use them in the article and i'm going to put the things in different places like the event eyewitness reports investigation us ufo research group type response now these are the titles that i came up with for these i don't have to use these i could change them if there was something else then i could use um these are just kind of a general thing that i've used in other wikipedia pages articles about ufos it could be completely different. It just depends on the subject. And I know nothing about this subject before I started reading these citations, which people get down on me about. They're like, well, you're not an expert. You're not a scientist. Well, look, it's not about my opinion. When you're writing a Wikipedia article, it does not matter. We don't want an expert writing the Wikipedia page. We don't want somebody who has an agenda in that like they're 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 trying to um how do you say this you know 
to attack or something. We're trying to be as neutral as possible within the ranges of the rules of fringe. And it's a little bit kind of your opinion. But as you see, now, when you watch me edit this and make the decisions that I make, I mean, everything can be changed. It's Wikipedia. So if there's a good argument to change it, I don't, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a good reason to change it, but it's not my opinion. I don't need to be an expert on this. I am going to write the Wikipedia page using citations that are notable, have journalistic integrity, are coming out of newspapers and places that, that should hold up if there was a problem. So that's how I'm putting these pages together. That's kind of how I work. Everybody does a little differently, but this is how I work. All right, so let's go into the edit screen here. And my edit screen might look a little different from other people's because I have a preference turned on that colors the citations. And this is a style I use. I call it crinkle, crinkle, R, bar, word, uncrinkle, uncrinkle. <laughs> That's what I call it. And <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's nice having you guys here so I can laugh with you guys. Okay. All none of you watching. So <laughs> here is the style I use, which is I put the citations that I'm using down here in this particular order. It's not an order, but a particular way that each citation has a has a name, a reference name. This one says debrief. This one says NY Times. This one says of gang, which is the last name of the author. This one says Schaefer. This one says LaRue. And then I have to spell it in with the same capitalization as, as up here in the article. And so you can see here, it says crinkle, crinkle, R, bar, New York Times, uncrinkle, uncrinkle. And what they do here is crinkle, crinkle, R, bar, of gang, uncrinkle, uncrinkle. And what it does is this is a neater way of editing Wikipedia, <clears throat> which means that I can, instead of putting the citation into the article like this, where it's really confusing looking to look at the edit screen, I have it set up so that I can easily take these citations. Here's all the other ones. I can easily take them and link to them really quickly. Now, we went through the New York Times article late last night. We finished about 10, 30, 10, 10 11 o'clock at night last night. And I went through the whole New York Times article and I closed it. I'm done. This is how my style of editing is. I get all my citations in a row or most of them. I get them cited. I get that all fussy citing stuff done. And then I put the tabs up here on the top of my page and I go through them in, in order of their published date. And I go through one at a time. And when I go through and squeeze everything I can possibly get out of it that I think I could need, then I close the tab and it's done. It's off my plate. Because when you're writing Wikipedia articles, you do not have to put every single piece of piece of knowledge out there. It's it's not important. We want the Wikipedia page to be something that the people will somebody will read, something they'll find interesting. If they want to get into the minutiae of an article, like what time things happened or how long an event happened, or specifics like what street it happened on. Well, then they can go down here to the citations and they can get the information from the citation. But a Wikipedia article is supposed to be a general overview written with the with a, somebody with a high school education would be able to read. Okay, if it's if it's if it's difficult to understand, then then we need to rewrite it. So as I go through this, if you guys have suggestions, all maybe nobody who's watching if you guys have any suggestions you can put them in the in the chat like how to reword something or if i've misspelled something or if you find something better or if you have a question please let me know and i will be happy to answer that for you all right so i did read this next article and i think it's really illuminating and i think i can see where we're going to use it so what i'm doing is i'm going through the article and i'm trying to see what fits in these categories, which is the event. What is What was the actual event for this UFO um, sighting? 
And then I'm putting down what were eyewitness reports, not what people said other people said, but what were the eyewitness reports of usually a named person? What is it they say they saw? <clears throat> and this line right here, I'm not quite sure where to put it. Westchester, which is a place, set up a phone hotline to field calls, according to the New York Times. So I'm not quite sure if I want to put that under event or eyewitness reports, or maybe I can expand on that sentence, but I have to, we'll see what the other articles say. And so the event is like a general overview of what, what is this all about? And then the eyewitness reports, and then here's the investigation. And then if there's any research done by a UFO group and what their response was, I will put it in this section. And then the, in the media would be like if another TV show did something on it, or maybe it was parodied on Saturday Night Live, or if I have links to that, I can put them in there. There may not be any, I don't know. And then the further reading section you've already seen. And then here's the citations, all right? So that's what we're looking for. And that's what I'm thinking about as I'm going through and I'm reading this. Again, some people do it other ways. This is just how I do it. So I'm letting you watch how I do it and think about it. So here's the next one. Now, this is a, a newspaper article that was in this article called Inside Out, Celebrating Connecting the Hudson Valley. This is inside and out upstate New York.com. So I don't know if this is a reliable source. It sounds like it's a touristy kind of article um, uh, website and it looks fun. I mean, look at this. I'd like to go to this place. And here's a newspaper article. And then I noticed, <laughs> and then I noticed when I got down here that this is another newspaper article from the Poughkeepsie Journal. June 28th, 1984. And as I was reading through this, I said, this is a really good newspaper article that I can use in the Wikipedia article. So I'm not going to cite inside and out upstate New York.com. I'm citing the Poughkeepsie Journal Thursday, June 28th, 1984, page 15 article. And it's right here. Where is it? Oh, it's here somewhere. Make sure I got it. Uh, LaRue, William LaRue. That's the, the journalist. So here's William LaRue and Probe of Mysterious V-Shape Widens, publisher of Poughkeepsie Journal, date June 28th, 1984, page 15. So I have that citation right here. I have not used it anywhere. I'm going to use LaRue, which is this one whenever I cite it in here. So maybe this will make a little more sense as you guys watch this. Okay, so let's look this over. I am going to put a link to this in the chat here so people can look at it themselves instead of trying to look over my shoulder and try to read it. So give me a minute to look it over. You guys read it over and let's see what we where it fits, if it fits. What can we use from this article? So this is the next summer. This is like 10 months after the the, the event happened in August of 2000, 1983. I might take a couple notes on some papers so I can remember what I think.
So there's an awful lot crammed into this article. And I made myself a little note about photography because in the New York Times article that I've already closed, I could go and reopen it. They mention photography and they interviewed people at like the local um, place that prints up photos. And they, the person they interviewed said, gosh, we have so many people turning in photos of this UFO that they're seeing outside of their houses or, you know, over a, a lake or whatever. They said they're, they're seeing a lot published. Uh, I mean, coming through their photo, photo mat like place. And yet in this article, this UFO person who runs an organization committee against UFO secrecy called cause his name is Peter Greston, he says that there's no photographs because the aliens are, the UFOs are not allowing photography. So those two things are at odds with each other. So what I need to do is I need to figure out where I'm going to put that, maybe under an investigation, I don't know, and put that the New York Times has interviewed people at this place, at, or, you know, it's in the New York Times about how they have, are getting photographs. And then this guy's response that, that, there are no photographs. And I think that's interesting. And so one was done at the time. The first article, the New York Times was out right after the event happened in 1983. And now this is 1984. And they're interviewing somebody who was not there who's saying this. So fascinating. I think that is a good idea to put in there somewhere. The other things that are interesting that are, he says in here that there was, there was a slight buzz most people are saying it was quiet and again eyewitnesses are fine but this guy i i want to put eyewitnesses that were eyewitnessed not so and so told me that they eyewitnessed somebody told me they saw this so um Okay, this is another thing that comes through a lot in the Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia, the UFO world, is they say eyewitness accounts equal evidence and that the people are credible and they are, you know, good upstanding citizens and so on. You see a lot of that in the articles um, trying to not make the person who's seeing the UFO be crazy or something. And this is, this is, you see that bias and the thing is is that people aren't assuming when people report a ufo it doesn't mean that they're not right in the head it doesn't mean that they're lying or hoaxing they could they could be seeing something there could be definitely something there and they're seeing whatever they see and they're interpreting it because of whatever reasons they're interpreting it that way um, to be something so in their minds it's not a ufo necessarily it is a thing and they describe it and they give it form you know this is a v-shaped um, object floating over a certain area a lake or a or a field or something so okay so i looked up this place peter kirsten and i looked it up to see if this guy had a wikipedia page he does not but i did find a wikipedia page called citizens against ufo secrecy caus which is spelled differently than the article has and i read through this today and it was a person out of arizona named peter gersten and he had an organization nonprofit organization out of arizona and what he would do is file freedom of information reports to different agencies trying to get information about uh, UFOs released, whatever the government was holding on to. And he had been, um, I guess, some success, some not success, able to get some things released. And I thought this was really sweet. He said, he's been described by UFOologists as UFO, UFOology's foremost ambulance chaser. He's been accused of turning the once respectable organization into a fringe new age association. In 2012, reported to be intending to jump off Bell Rock, Rock in Sedona, Arizona, saying that some kind of cosmic portal will be opening up at that time and place and that an opportunity will present itself. I fully expect that it will either lead to the next level of this cosmic program, 
freedom from an aspiring time loop, a magical Martian-like bubble, or something equally as exotic. He wandered home when his predicted vortex did not appear. Citation 10, which is Phoenix New Times. Sedona Vortex Jumper. I vaguely remember this. And I vaguely remember this 2010. And I remember the media. I guess he had the media there with him. And people were like, is this guy really believe it? Is he really going to jump? Is it just because his 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 fame has died over the years and or is he mentally ill or you know is it a stunt we didn't know and i think there was people who was talking to him trying to get him talk him out of doing this and that this is a bad idea yeah it would have been a really bad idea if he jumped thinking he was going to jump into a vortex and really scary but i do remember this so that's happening in 2010 so that doesn't really have anything to do with what he was doing in the 1980s so it's hard to, um, that obviously can't be held against him. People change and circumstances change. And maybe it was a publicity stunt. I don't know. Maybe it's a dare. <laughs> I don't know. It's not important. But I just thought this was interesting because I'd never read it this before. So this is Citizens Against UFO Secrecy. And that is this organization here that they call C-A-U-S-E. So it's not the E. So I can... So this man, Peter Gersten, in 1984, was trying to get, um, he was not there at the, at the time of the incident in 1983. So he was trying to get people to come together, like a meeting of people to gather who had sighted the object a year after the event. And he said he's been approached by a lot of people who have eyewitness accounts and so on. So I'm not really sure where to put that unless I were to put something like that under the UFO investigation thing, because I guess that was some sort of investigation. Um, he says that some of the reports were of planes flying in formation to account for some of the UFO sightings, but not all of them. Some people actually saw something that could be a UFO. He said, planes cannot account for some of the eyewitness accounts. Barely a sound at treetop level. He's not been successful in tracking down the formation flyers to determine if they have flown at the time of the UFO sightings, which I think that would be really, really good. What time were these people flying? What time were the reports? I think that would be interesting. I plan to put a private investigator on them and we're taking this very seriously. Well, we have no idea yet because I'm, I'm stopping with this article, June 28th, 1984. Maybe some articles that come up in the future, these other ones up at the tabs, will have his private investigation, private investigator. We'll see. So Heineck, the country's leading UFO researcher who wrote the book on this, um, he's, in, he's in the um, further reading section of this, he says that Gersten is a widely respected guy, mostly unsuccessfully to force the U.S. government to release its secret files and UFOs. He's been helping all of us. He's definitely legit. Okay, well, so he is filing. He's a lawyer. He's filing um, freedom of information articles, but okay. He feels passionate about it. Doesn't mean he knows has evidence but you know again this is this is my opinion and we don't want to put my opinion in here um Heinick and gersten both believe that some of the accounts are the planes but not all because there's too many people reporting sightings so i don't know what do you guys think where can i put So according to this Gersten person, he says it could be these reports that are not the planes flying, but the other stuff. It could be explained as extraterrestrial. We had someone try to photograph the object, but it has avoided being filmed. Mm. So I guess we should put this under... UFO research group response, right? Hmm. 
Let's see. Let's try this. According to UFO researcher, no, UFO, what is he? According to Peter Gersten, he's not former at the time, according to UFO um, how do they call him here? Um, UFO Freedom of Information Activists. Yes, say that. Peter Gersten, G E R S T E N. Okay, that's his name. According to him, How many months is this? June. So it's 10 months. 10 months after in the summer of 1984, his organization his organization is this one. And then I'm going to put in parentheses C A U S. According to this guy in the summer of 1980, it was an organization was received hundreds of calls. I guess it wasn't emails, huh? He put he put a classified advertisements. He sees received more than a hundred reports of a huge boomerang shaped object that hovers at treetop. Okay, so maybe not calls. Hundreds of reports of a boomerang. Is that what you called it? Okay. Large. object hovering with lights hovering over the trees over trees with lights okay Gersten. Okay, how do we say that about the photography? Um, okay, he's going to do further research by hiring a private investigator. Had at that time not interviewed the pilots who had claimed 
they were responsible. The person intended to hire a private investigator to look into the times timing of reported sightings the pilot the the into the timing of reported sightings course possibly corresponding to the pilots, the flights by the pilots. Um, I don't want to say he, because he would be, might be confused with somebody else. And also in Wikipedia world, we do not use honorifics. And we do not use doctor, it was old doctor or anything like that. And I can't also start saying Peter. So we always call them by their last name. We use their first name once and then we we move on with everything else is by the last name. Believes. Believed, believes that some of the eyewitness. were describing wait how should I say it we're describing the pilots or should I say some of the eyewitness reports how do we say that the the eyewitness reports were were probably the pilots, but not all of them. Were explained, how about that? A Z formation, but not all of the eyewitness reports. Okay, so when you're writing a Wikipedia page, you have to put it into your own words, and it's a little hard sometimes because you're influenced by what you just read in the newspaper or the article because a lot of times it's written well in the article so that it makes it easy it flows well so the way i find to put it in my own words is to read it over maybe a couple times the article and then come back without looking at the article but to try to just sum it up in my own words to to still get the gist of it so that it is um, I'm reporting from the New York uh, from the article correctly, but I'm not verbatim because if I'm verbatim copying anything, I have to use I have to use quotes. So let's let's read that over. According to the UFO Freedom of Information activist Peter Gersten, in the summer of 1984, his organization, Citizens Against UFO Secrecy, received hundreds of reports of a large boomerang object hovering over trees with lights. Should I put it in that area? Gersten had at that time not interviewed the pilots who had claimed they were responsible. I uh, used his name to me. And he intended to 
to hire a private investigator to look into the timing of the reported sightings, possibly corresponding to the flights by the pilots. Ah, it's too long. He intended to hire a private. Remember, everything can be changed, you guys. So if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. And then when I'm all done, somebody else can come in here and change it if they don't want to, if they don't like it. He believes that some of the eyewitnesses, the eyewitness reports were explained by the flight of the pilots flying in a V formation, but not all of the eyewitness reports. Okay. Let's see how well that does with what we have in this article here. He's talking about how they get a lot of reports from credible people who say it's not planes. Um, it could be, okay, this right here, I've got to do something with that. An unidentified, okay. Hundred, oh, and even the latest sightings were Monday night. So that's a year, almost a year later. He said he's received more than 100 reports. Hovers at treetop level with a slight buzz. Oh, did I say that? Do they all or just some? Okay, slight buzz. So I'm going to put that in quotes because that's, I'm quoting exactly what it says. 20 lights that simultaneously turn from white to red. Oh, this is some witnesses. Let's just not get into the weeds with, because I did already see lights. One guy thought it was something out of the Close Encounters of the Third Kind, referring to the movie. You know, see, this is really interesting. Um, I, I, don't know how far in the weeds we want to get, but if you look at um, like the Chupacabra story with um, Ben Radford did a lot of research on this and he said oh, hold on he said that that things that are in the movies, things like that will really influence a phenomenon. So this may this whole encounter this whole hoax by these pilots and all the things that people are seeing may really heavily be influenced by something that was in the media and so what was in the media at that time was this movie close encounters of the third kind this is from 1977 and it might have and i don't remember did it have like something hovering silently over with flashing lights of red, yellow, or red, white, or whatever, blue, um, over people in not very, sp in sparse areas. I mean, it might have, I don't, I don't remember the movie that well, but this, this movie, oh yeah, that's right, Devil's Tower in Wyoming, so it wasn't out in the boonies. So this movie may have influenced what people's opinions of Oh, look. Oh, God, that brings back memories. So this movie might have actually influenced this, this hoax for these pilots to have done and also influenced the people who saw in the sky what they expected to see, even... Uh, it um that that would be interesting that's not my area that's something ben radford should look into if he if he wants to he's a busy guy but that that would be interesting to see okay so this is coming out of this article i was reading this wasn't i the pilot who asked not to be identified said he and others Tests their skills by flying in a V-shape with a rotating beacon and navigation lights. He said the formation might appear motionless from the ground because it is so wide and can be seen from long distances. A Dutchess County pilot says he flies in formation at night. Most of the UFO accounts could describe the sight of formation flyers. Ah, 
almost since the first UFO report surfaced in March 1983. So that is changing the timeline because I said it was April. I mean, August of 1983. So this is written a almost a year later, but they're saying March 1983. So I need to change the timeline for this. And according to this guy from Cause, he says even recently the sightings were still happening. Were last Monday, so we need to change the dates. This is he flies information. Okay, this is the pilot. We've had three to five call from people who said it was definitely planes. We know some planes pilots have intentionally or unintentionally been flying at night and confusing things. But he said planes cannot account for reports of a huge solid object that hovered with barely a sound at tree level. Here he said a buzzing, slight buzzing. Here he says barely a sound. Uh, a sound. I plan to put a private investigator and we're taking this very seriously. Okay, then this is Heinick. And this is talking about the reputation of this guy, Peter. So that's not important because this Wikipedia page is not about Gersten. Um, Heinick said his computer analysis of 400 separate sightings indicate planes and not the sole source of all reports. At least some sightings could not correlate to anything we could explain, according to Heinick. Okay, so let's change this timeline first. This is 1984 Hudson Valley. Okay, I, I can't. So let's say um, March 19... 83 to, well, that was in June, Obviously, settings that stretched a stretched um, throughout nineteen eighty three nineteen eighty four. The, how do I say this? Majority, the the majority of sightings were reported in August, summer of 1980. majority of reports sightings okay we may have to come back and change it but at least we have a little more accuracy here okay so we're here there so this is larue i'm going to copy that <laughs> so this will have a citation now that'll correspond with larue down here see how that works See how easy it is? I don't have to cite it again or I don't have to do anything fussy because it's really simple. I keep I keep all my little lines so I can go boom, 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 boom. So let's move that out of here. I should just have them all lined up somewhere. All right. I do. They're right there. Okay. So we have LaRue in there, but not all of the... Okay, now this can be fussed on a little bit. Now, what I want to say is that what the pilot says 
And I want to say something about the photographs. So where would I put the photographs part and where would I put the pilot stuff? With the pilot said, should I put that under investigation? Certainly wouldn't go into eyewitness. It wouldn't really go into event. I could put, no, I think it should go under an investigation. This seems like the most likely place I should put it. I don't think I need another one because here I have what they said. So let's try that next. Let's, let's do that. Um, should I combine it with this? What is it saying? Okay, in February 1984. Oops, I spelled it wrong. A pilot. I don't want to say admitted. Claimed. Pilot interviewed. Or yeah, he told the Poughkeepsie Journal. All right, so he tells so the Poughkeepsie Journal is supposed to have integrity, journalistic integrity, and and know this guy who he is. They just don't name him. And so they should, so that's how I'm getting away with saying that they have, um, you know, somebody knows who this guy is. I'm putting italics. Interviewed by the Poughkeepsie Journal said, what does he say? Can't copy that so i'm gonna have the maybe i shouldn't quote it he and others test their skills test their skills by flying at night using uh, flying in a V-shape with a rotating beacon. Rotating beacon? Whatever that is. And navigation lights. Okay, the formation might appear motionless. Might appear motionless because it is so wide and can be seen from...
Okay, should I put this part? I do think people are ignorant about flying, the pilot said, and allow imagination to make up for a lot of things. I don't think I'm going to put that in there. Okay, so. All right, so the only other thing was this thing he was saying that there are no photographs. Okay, so this is LaRue. Do I have that spelled right and everything? So I'm using the same citation multiple times, and this is how you do it by using this kind of format. There's other ways of doing it. Most commonly, most editors do it a totally different way, but I like this way. Okay, the deputy director. It is so wide. Does he say so wide? Yeah, he says so wide. Okay, and I've got quotes on that. Okay, this thing about the photographs. All right, so the New York Times article, I have to open that up again, talks about the photographs. And then this guy a year later talks about that there are no photographs. Well, that it can't... It could be explained as extraterrestrial. We had somebody try to photograph the object, but it is avoided being filmed. Okay, so where do I put that, the two different things? Under investigation? Under eyewitness reports? Under event? Because I want to put the two statements together. What do you guys think? Is it the event? No. Is it under eyewitness reports? No. Uh, is it under investigation? Under UFO research group response, probably, huh? And then I could put his claim, and then I could put the New York Times right after it. Okay, so according to, I don't want to start every sentence with according to, Gersten blamed the lack, no, blamed the lack of photographs, claimed. The object did not want to be photographed. No. How do I say this? Let me read it again. We had someone try to photograph the object, but it has avoided being filmed. Or I could just quote exactly what he says. Right? It could be explained as extraterrestrial. Stated. I never know what to say here. I never know how to quite then. Did someone try to photograph? Okay. 
Da, să care găsim mai asa. The object. But it has avoided being filmed. So this is going to have the inside quote. This is a quote of a quote. And this is from LaRue. And then let's go back to the New York Times article. Here it is. Equal in there. Okay, here's the digitize. Here, in case somebody wants to look at that. The experts should have plenty of photographs to study at the meeting. We're seeing quite a few UFO pictures. Manager of CPI photo finish in Yorktown. People come in and hand do the film and say, be careful with these. We ran outside with a camera because something was flying over our house. It breaks up the day for us. You get tired of seeing Hawaii. I don't know. It's a little creepy that people are looking at other people's pictures. <laughs> I guess you could glance at it. According to the... According to the manager of, according to the manager of CPI photo finish, we got to look and see if that's on. Here we go. Should I say yet or but? We're seeing quite a few UFO pictures. Photograph something hovering over, or what is it? What are, they, something is flowing up the hall. Okay, something, they went out, they photographed. Something flying over their homes. Okay, this is from the New York Times. Yeah. 
I thought I finished in our town. We're seeing quite a few UFO photos. Customers state they photograph something flying over their homes. Okay. So is CPI photo finish like a chain or is it just some, you know, no name place? So I need to look and see if this exists. I can get rid of the New York Times. As soon as I get rid of it, that's when it I need it again. Nope, doesn't exist. Okay, so I can just leave it like it is. So, should it could be explaining as extraterrestrials or anything else that we want to use out of this Luru article. Slight breeze, single engine planes. Where was the single engine planes? I wrote that down. Ah, uh, surface from March 1983. State police and other authorities have said there are several single engine planes flying in formation. Okay, now this March 1983, should I put this by the date? Let's put LaRue here too. Oops, wrong. Thought I had that last. LaRue. Because that has the dates. Do I have this th throughout? Okay. So this is published in June 28th, 1984. Yet this is called 1984. Summer of 1984. So this article isn't a year later. So I had that wrong. This is actually before the New York Times article, which is August. So this article should have been first. I found this article after I'd already cited this, the New York Times article. So I should probably change this part. The majority of the sightings were in the summer of 84. Oh, that is the summer of 84. The New York Times article is 84. August of 84. You see, August 25th, 1984. So the Poughkeepsie one is June of 84, and they claim that there was episodes of it back in March of 83. I wonder if they have the, it's a typo and maybe it's supposed to be March of 84. Well, that's what the newspaper's articles say. So I'm just going to leave it. So I guess I got myself confused. So the, the Poughkeepsie article was first, then Two months later, it became it came out with the New York Times article. So that's I try to go in chronological order. So I need to change this here in during. Reports ranging from March 1983, unless we hear something better, through T H R O U G H, the summer of 1984.
reports ranging from March 1983 throughout the summer of 1984 in and the Kipsy journal they the Poughkeepsie Journal also says the same thing, right? So let's put the Poughkeepsie Journal in here as also a citation of what these people are claiming to see and the dates. So I'm going to put these two citations right next to each other. No space in between these two. Right after that period right there. And it, let me show you what this will look like. So now we've gotten kind of far in this. Let me let you see what it, it looks like. Let me hit preview. Sorry, I just had a message from one of the editors. Let me know that he's progressing with the page. Okay, so let's see what we got. These right here, all these little dots right here are just the, the little redirects I have. So here's the two I just put, which are the ones I put them right next to each other. And kitty, here's three, three. Three and three is the New York Times. One is the LaRue, no. I don't remember. Okay. Number citation one is going to the LaRue and three is going to the New York Times. So this is the LaRue. This part is the LaRue. And this part is New York Times, the sentence. See how you have to change partway through? So if I had gone back and, and put something right here, that was from LaRue, then I have to put LaRue, New York Times, then cite again the LaRue. And that's how you have to do that. All right, and this all still looks okay. See how many times you've used LaRue? One, two, three, four, five, six times you've used LaRue. And the New York, Ti New York Times is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times we've used the, the New York Times. So generally the first one you put in here is the one you use the most. It's just kind of where you get the most of your stuff. Okay. So, and then plus these don't count right here because these are going to be gone whenever I'm done. All right. So have we used everything we want to use in this LaRue article? Oh, I was thinking of putting something about single engine state police and other authorities have said there are several single engine planes flying in formation. Okay. But this is June the event no i i don't think i need to put that in here because all right so i'm closing that gone next site Nuke plant guards report hovering UFOs. Okay, this is another thing. This is happening in 1985. This is completely, see, here's the main page of the newspaper, and here's the little thing down here. This is a totally different thing. There may be another Wikipedia page. I don't know. I remember this being mentioned. I think it was in the UFO movie, They Don't Want You to See. The UFO movie, They Don't Want You to See. I think that's this. Okay, so... What we're looking at right here is a citation from the White Plains, New York Journal News from 1985, page one. And then here's page two. Continue from A1, see UFO on back section now. So this doesn't have anything we need, right? There's This is about a nuclear plant, okay? So this can be gone. 
boom, gone. See, I told you we're getting through these faster. So let's look at this and read this and see if this is going to be something that we would want to use. This is the Journal News from 1985. And the citation we would use is... This one, John Craig. So, yeah. So when we cite this, we're going to use John Craig, which I don't have here. Let's see. Give me one. Crinkle, crinkle, R, bar, John Craig, and then uncrinkle, crinkle. Okay, so that's the citation we're going to use when we, if we use this article. So let's read this over. So if you guys need to take notes, oh, let me put this link in the comment section in case there is somebody who wants to look at that on their own. These all should all be in the article when it's published here. But let's see. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Is this the same? This is the same. So this isn't what I thought it was. Okay, I was confused. So this is this is an article in 1985 about a 
UFO being seen over a plant. What kind of plant? Oh, this is a nuclear power plant. Okay, so... Oh, um, reported they saw a UFO hovering over the plant for 15 minutes on... June 14th and July 24th, 1984. Okay, so who is this guy? Philip M. Borgino. Philip, according to Philip... I M B R O G N O. Who is an astronomer with the Center for UFO Studies? Okay, so let's. So I know I'm, it looks like I'm doing a lot of um, looking up stuff. Because I want to make sure that if they exist, we can link to their Wikipedia page. Philip and Big And valuing the hidden agenda of genies. Ouija gone wild. Oh, he wrote a book with Files on the Edge of Paranormal Investing. The Bell Witch. So it looks like this Philip M. Bergino did a lot of different paranormal stuff. Let's look and see what it says. Oh, this page needs rewriting. Look at that. Oh, he wrote Night Siege with this guy. Oh. He died in 1986, so right after this. Okay. So let's see if this let's see if the center of you have studies exists. Curse of Cuff of uh, Heinick has founded it. All right. Privately funded USO, UFO research group. Oh, okay. So I wonder if this guy's on here anywhere. I-M-B-R-O-G-N-O. He's not even mentioned on this page. Well, that's not right. Okay. According to this guy who's working with the Center for UFO Studies, he's an investigator. It was quite an incident and they were quite upset. He said he 
interviewed six guards who contacted him about the sighting. They said the UFO was 900 feet long and hovered over the plant for 15 minutes. 900 feet. 900 feet. Oh, somebody has given me a citation. IMDB. Oh, Philip. That's the guy. Oh, somebody's listening. Oh, TJ. Here's this. In, okay. Inch, oh, Lord, this guy's been on everything. Okay, he's been in Ancient Aliens, Weird or What, Creepy Canada, then Explain Sightings, Unsolved Mysteries. This is this Philip, Philip M. Guy. All right. He's known for all kinds of stuff. Alrighty, Rue. Unsolved Mysteries, dude. Okay. So according to this guy who worked with this UFO studies, he says that these guards contacted him. All right. A spokesman for the plant confirmed the sightings and said, oh, but it's been six months. Okay, so that was July of 84. All right, so that's about six months. And he remembers the guards discussing it when he reported to work the following day. I didn't see it, but I remember some guys said they saw it, and I accept them as really reasonable people. One security officer requested anonymity, said the object was 100 feet long. Well, the other said it was 900 feet. What the heck? And looked like helicopters in a V formation made some noise and hovered 300 yards above the plant. He said the guards broke out the shotguns. But the security coordinator said, I think people are going to publish stories on hysteria and misinformation. As far as I'm concerned, it's pure speculation. You would think the security guard. You would think that if a... 900 foot ufo was hovering over their plant for 15 minutes 300 feet above or whatever it was you would think that everybody'd have their story straight and not only that it happened in june 14th but it came back on july 24th there should be some kind of protocol some way of like calling or doing something or photographs or okay our published stories on hysteria and misinformation as far as i'm concerned is pure speculation regarding a report that officers broke out the shotguns the commander said we just don't do things like that he this imborgino person could possibly be making up or he took what the witnesses gave him and stretched it out another officer who also asked for anonymity added i talked to some of the people who believe it was something but some people let their imaginations get worked up. I believe it was nothing. I'm sure a lot of it was just badly inflated. Wow. Okay, so back to these people from Troop K of the New York State Police said that they believe the sightings were Cessnas flown by pranksters out of this airport. As far as we're concerned, there's no such thing as DFOs. All right, so this guy, Jeffrey, he leases out two small aircraft, which he says have been involved in other reported UFO sightings. He doesn't know anything about the incident. India, Indian Point, I guess that's the place. But it's possible my plane was involved, but I wasn't. Okay, pilots and private commercial planes use a plant as a handy landmark when flying nearby. From the air, it's easy to pick out. So in other words, this pilot is saying that... Pilot? Patrick. Who's Patrick? Patrick, oh, from the Troop K. He says that they use this plant as a landmark when flying nearby. From the air, it's easy to pick out. I don't know of any regulations that restrict the airspace around Indian Point. Okay, and this guy said the commander gave the order to pull out the shotguns and they summoned Camp Smith but we have no documents. Wah, wah, wah. He has filed a freedom of information request with the FNRC. And okay, for documents, 
um, said his agency received the request about three weeks ago, but it has no documentation for the sighting. So this Peter dude said that he filed a freedom of information request about the sighting, but the agency says there has been no documentation of the sighting. So how do I put this in here? Do I put it under eyewitnesses? Do I put it under event? Do I put it under Do I put it under UFO research? Do I make another one? Here that's for Indian Point. And then sum up that article. Where do I put it? I think I should make a separate one for the for the. All right. So where do I put it? Event. We already know their flight flashlights. I've used that several times. So I can get rid of it. I just had that in there because it was what was part of the old article. It was part of this article. Nope, not that one. Oops. This article. Okay. So should I put event and then put a bigger watch? One, two, three. Indian Point Power Plant. Um, that P has to be lowercase. Indian Point Power Plant sighting. Sightings. I'm going to put three. So this should make it a different font size. Let's see how this looks. Here's the event. And then under here, Indian Point Power Plant Siding. Should I do it that way? I mean, it could be changed if we don't like it. All right. So let's let's try that. And then what we'll, is Indian Point Power Plant a does that have a Wikipedia page? Is this it? This is it. Ooh, that is big. You would think they'd notice something that's 900 feet, right? Let's see if there's anything in this article about UFOs. Nope. And this giant Indian Point Energy Center there's nothing mentioning the CFO. Hundred and twenty citations, hundred and twenty-three citations, and no mention of the CFO. All right, that kind of tells you that it was probably nothing. Oops, but let's let's go with this. Okay, energy point, energy set. Okay, Indian point. All right, so we're gonna use that. Let's do this. Let's sum this up, folks, using our own words. All right. Center for UFO S-T-U-D-I-E-S.
I M B R O G N O. I M B R O I M B R O G N O. I am. Okay. Stated he was a, approached by several plant guards from the okay, here's the true name of it oopsie daisy I doubt it was called the Indian Center at the time so I'm going to put a bar And I'm going to go here, and it was called Indian Point Nuclear Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant. That's what it's called at that time. That in June, that on June 14th, 1984. And July 24th, 1984. Let's take this one. July 24th, 1984. They saw a 900 feet UFO hovering over the plant for 15 Oop, TLA plant for 15 minutes. Okay, they saw a 900 foot UFO hovering over the plant for 15 minutes. According to Embergadu, to I M B R O G N O. He said guards broke up with shotguns. Okay, so this person, this security officer is not Peter. Okay, so I can't use that. Okay. One A hundred feet long and how many feet over? Three hundred yards. And what was the other thing he said? Look like. Look like helicopters in a V formation. Okay. 
the guard said, oopsie daisy. Broke out the shotguns. That doesn't make sense. The guard said the guard. The guard said the guards. He said, will it make sense if I say he? Does that make sense? Okay, is that what he says? He said guards broke out the shotguns. Okay, here's the Sombrogino. He says, the commander gave the order to pull out the shotguns and they summoned Camp Smith, but we have no documents. Okay, so I can say that. E-R-O-G-N-O -O told the... Journal News. Okay, so that makes it italicized that the commanders I should put this on. The commander gave the order to pull out the shotguns. And camp who was notified? And they summoned Camp, Camp Smith. I have to spell that one. Hey, does Camp Smith have a Wikipedia page? Oh, another stub. See, look at this. Somebody needs to rewrite this page. I just need to see it. We'll go like this, put the true name of it, and then we'll just call it Camp Smith, and then we'll just go like this. Okay, so this is coming from the article called Joe John Craig. Let's see how this looks. Hit preview. Okay, Center for UFO Studies, that opens. Philip stated he is approached by several guards from the Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant that is actually now called Indian Point Energy Center. That on June 14th and 25th of July 84, they saw 900 feet, 900 feet, 900 foot, it should be foot. Where is a foot? Feet? They saw 900 feet 
I guess that's right. UFO hovering over the plant for 15 minutes. One security guard said it was 100 feet long and 300 yards over the plant and looked like helicopters in a V formation. He said, okay, he, is that clear? The guard said. How about we say this? No. He said. The security guard said. Okay, that does that open the journal news? Yep. That the commander gave the order to pull the shotguns and they summoned Camp Smith, but we have no documentation. Okay, so the security guard said that the guards broke up, comma, that the guards broke out the shotguns. That, comma, okay, I need to fix those. The security guard said, Alma. And Margo told them that the commander gave the order to pull out the shotguns and they summoned Camp Smith, but we have no documentation. Okay, that's fine. One security guard said it was 900 feet long and 300 yards. Okay, if it's if it's feet or foot, somebody else can change it. I don't care. I think they say feet in here, don't they? Yeah, they say feet. So that's what it is. 300 yards. Is that what I put? Yeah, okay, I got that. So this is what the paranormal event says, according to this article. Now, how about this part? All right, so that paragraph now, in this paragraph, oh, what'd you find? Ooh, TJ, boy. Oh, good Lord. You found the, the um, Freedom of Information Act. Damn, somebody can research. Provisions of the Freedom of Information Act accompanying the request is attachment one is a copy of the newspaper article concerning a recent earthquake that occurred in New York State. It's hard to read you guys. It's it's in the link there. The article from a New York newspaper states that personnel at the Indian Point nuclear power plant treated the earthquake as an unusual event. An unusual event. I don't know. Issue the National Enquirer. Oh my God, the National Enquirer was involved. gargantuan and diamond shaped <laughs> closed circuit television system but it has been revealed the object was so large that it filled the monitor screen requiring the camera to be panned to view the object in its entirety the object was reported to have overflown a restricted area of the plant what okay um and possibly the security threats must be reported overseen. Oh, jeez. National Enquirer. Okay, obviously I can't cite National Enquirer, but that's very interesting. Okay. Four point oh. Good lord. Four point oh. Gee, here in California, we don't even wake up for a 4.0. That's like ho-hum. It's only a 4.0. All right. Maybe a jolt. I mean, a 4.0 could jolt. But it certainly wouldn't make the newspaper. 
but maybe it's a slow news day. 47 seconds is long. A jolt. That's not a jolt. A trimmer. Okay. Ed Kosh. Oh, wow. Look at this. We're looking at history, you guys. <laughs> this guy, um, Ed Kosh said, I didn't fall out of bed. I waited five minutes for the second shock. And when it didn't come, I went back to sleep. Excuse me. Wow. That's the largest to hit the New York metropolitan area in more than three decades. Yeah, it's mild by geologist standards in California. <laughs> I just said that. Isn't that funny? In California, those occur about four times a month. Okay. Okay. What has this earthquake got to do with the UFO sighting? So what does the quake have to do with the earthquakes? UFO investigator Philip Embargo. Okay. Here's a picture of this guy. Darn, I wish we had some photos that we could use. Okay, Carl Hoffman of the Poughkeepsie or someplace Peak Skill Police Department admitted on the evening I observed an unidentified flying object. I saw a dozen white lights and V formation slowly moving towards the power plant. I have absolutely no idea what it was. And television is like a toaster. You push a button and the same thing pops up every time, according to Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> oh, I miss these little things they used to put in the newspapers. Okay, because this is a National Enquirer, I can't cite. Everything in here is pretty much what was in the other article, except that this National Enquirer says it was gargantuan. So I can't cite that. And I can't cite this Carl Hoffman of the police department because it's the National Enquirer. So unfortunately, I can't. But, all right, let me look this over again. Senate and the provisions of the Freedom from Information Act. So this is the Freedom of Information Act being submitted by somebody named Robert Todd, who is asking about this earthquake. And UFOs and so on. And that it was supposedly, okay, according to Robert Todd, who's filling out this uh, Freedom from Information Act form, he says that a number of security guards cited the object, which was described as gargantuan and diamond shaped. In addition, it is known that the object was cited on the plant's closed circuit television system. It had been revealed that the object was so large that it filled the monitor screen requiring the camera to be point panned to view the object in its entirety. The object was reported to have overflown a restricted area of the plant. Okay, this is great. I'm super glad you gave me this, TJ. 
but I cannot use it in the article because this is a primary source. But what it can be done is it can go right here, so it's not lost, under external links. So this is a Where'd it go? Here it is. This is a F I F O I A Freedom of Information. Free. From December twenty third. 1985 by Jim Todd. Is that his name? Robert Todd. To General See, I can't copy and paste because this is printed. Oh, this is just getting so interesting. There's something I knew nothing about. Okay, so let's do this. How do I want to do this? December 20, oops, 23rd, 1985. Um, Oh gosh, can't even say the word right. N nu nuclear. And then I'm going to go like this. Oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to put nuclear. And then we will take this site. Actually, this looks like a bunch of garbage right here, doesn't it? Do I can take up that question mark? Yep, PDF. So there is the document. Somebody can find that if they want. Now it's going to look like this. External links. Uh-oh. I need to get figure out which one it is. Or I, I I won't hyperlink to it. I'll just remove that because I I, I don't want to get involved with that. It's obvious what it is. Preview. Ta da! So somebody can look at that if they want to. It's a primary source, so I can't cite it for anything because it is not, and I can't cite this newspaper article, and this is about an earthquake that is mentioned in this, but it has nothing to do, the earthquake itself has nothing to do with the UFO. But um, Nuclear, <laughs> thank you. Tomato, tomato.
All right, next one that TJ has given us. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. This was interesting. It's fascinating. It is part of the, the record. It is on the Wikipedia page there, but because it is a primary source and because it's part, and the newspaper articles are about a UFO, I mean, uh, from the National Enquirer, and because the other article is a article about an earthquake that isn't having anything to do with this UFO. I mean, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with the UFO thing. I can't use it as a source. Okay. So that's what that is. But we have that there. Okay. Now TJ's giving me something else. Something to IMDb. Oh, a documentary about the Indian Point power plant and its virtual lack of security following the tragic events of September 11, 2001. Huh. Indian Point. Wow, I've never heard of this power plant. Okay, so this would be if this was a documentary on the UFO sighting, then I would put this in the media. But because it is about the tragic events of September 11th. Oh, it has Al Franken in it. Oh, Robert Kennedy, F. Kennedy Jr., Rory Kennedy. Here, let me let you, well, you guys can see it. It's in the chat. Okay. That's Indian Point. All right. Okay. Brilliant. Now, where am I? <laughs> so much for two hours, right? I started at six, huh? Okay. We can do this. I don't want to go to a third day. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Here we are. Indian Point. Okay. So we've put in here all that was the paranormal aspects, that there are people who are pulling out shotguns and they summoned Camp Smith, but there's no documentation. Okay, now let's put what we can do. We can do it. Let's put what else is in that article, but the how it's explained. So this is how you do it in Wikipedia. You should cite... Or should write what is the fringe or the paranormal stuff. But if you have an answer, then answer it. And it, it it's it, and if the fringe answers the the other stuff, then put it in there. So you're giving if there if it's in a citation place where it has a journalistic integrity. I mean, you just can't keep quoting it like um national Enquirer or something but you can go in and put here's what they said here's what the other side said and if there's another one you could say and here's what they said to that and then here's what the other said you can do that boom 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 and that's fine as long as you are citing um using citations that are have journalistic integrity not national Enquirer, um and not like blogs or websites or people's opinions or whatever. It has to be like we're looking at newspaper articles that are supposedly, you know, would have some reputation to be harmed if it was wrong. And that's what it, I mean by journalistic integrity, too, is that if they get it wrong, will they retract it or could they be sued or would they be held accountable or would they lose face? Do they have to have. I mean, if it's a National Enquirer and the National Enquirer gets it wrong, people go, well, it's the National Enquirer or it's the Daily Mail. So why do you believe it? But if it's something that should have some oomph to it and that they're unlikely to do print the wrong thing on purpose or if they get caught or if they realize they've done something wrong, then they're going to retract it, even if it is on page 50 but they're going to retract it or they're going to pull the article or whatever they do. Okay. Enough of that. Okay. We, we can't put all this that people said, Oh, I went to work on Friday and some guards are discussing it, but I didn't see it. So that I can't put that. And we already got this. 
Okay, power authority security coordinator. Well, he wasn't there. Okay, he is a coordinator. He is, the oh, the commander said, we just don't do things like that, breaking out shotguns. Here's another officer who asked for an amenity. I talked to some of the people who believe it was something. Some people let their imaginations get worked up. I believe it was nothing. Okay, he wasn't there, so I'm not going to say anything. Um, as far as we're concerned, there's no such thing as UFOs. Okay. This guy, he leases out two small aircraft, which he says may have been involved in the reported UFO sighting. says he doesn't know anything about the Point Indian incident, but it's possible. That my plane was involved, but I wasn't. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to say that. Pilots of private and commercial planes use a plane as a handy landmark when flying nearby. From the air, it's easy to pick out. I don't know of any regulations that restrict the aerospace. Okay. This is Patrick, who is the true. Okay, that's right. The commander. Gave okay. And then here I can say about the Freedom of Information Act was received but they the NRC what's NRC anybody know what the NRC is spokesman for the NRC New York NYPA New York They can't do control fine very easily. Okay, what am I going to say here? This guy's named a power authority security coordinator. I, he's named, so I can I can use him. So John, as I said, it's easier if I have I, I if I used multiple screens, I would find this e. I could do that. Let me just put it on another screen here so that I can type it faster because this is going to take forever. All right. Oh, I can hear the rain. That's so nice. Okay, so because this is a power authority security coordinator who's named B-R-A-C-I-F-O-R-T-E. Okay, that's correct. Then I think I could put his opinion because he is a person of, of authority. He should know if this happened. The commander said, who's the commander again? Is the commander in here? Um, it is. The commander is. I'm still editing. Mark's like, what are you doing in there? Who are you talking to? 
Okay, regarding their officers brought out the shotguns, the commander, we just don't do things like that. Who's the commander? Or I think maybe he means the coordinator, right? That I think it has to be because it's following this other um, paragraph. And I think they just use the word commander when they meant coordinator, or coordinator, security coordinator. Yeah, because that doesn't make sense otherwise it didn't. Okay, so let's see. Um, let me do it this way. Oops. We oh, I could do it this way. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. What about that, TJ? Is that who they wrote to? Okay, what is that in reference to? Nuclear Regulatory Commission, TJ. I stated that. Uh, okay. Okay, this other officer who also asked for anonymity added, I talked to some of the people who believe it was something. So we're still in this, oops, we're still in this article. And this other officer said some people let their imaginations get worked up. I believe it was nothing. I don't really want to quote that because, again, he's not named, even though it does say officer. The, we already know that the New York State Police Department said that, they, that it was Cessna's. Okay, flown by pranksters. There are no, okay, so I can say that Troop K, Patrick and Kenneth Spiro, Patrick and Kenneth V. Spiro, Zone Sergeant. How is that somebody's name? Patrick? Is there a Patrick in here somewhere else? Oh, spokesman for, there you are, NYPA. He said, and this Troop K Sergeant, police um, sergeant, said that they were they believe the sightings are Cessna's 152s flown by pranksters and then I can say 
this guy who is working for, he's a spokesman for the NYPA, that from the, that they use the plant as a handy landmark when flying nearby from the air, it's easy to pick out. And they don't know of any restrictions that restrict the airspace around it. And then I need to follow up with that embargo did filed a freedom of information request and that the agency received it but had no documentation of the citation okay so let me move this over to my working space here oh i was asking what the nrc was thank you okay keep that thought because i'm about to write it here in in RC and the NYPA is a spokesman of NYPA operator of unit three confirmed deciding is NYPA the plant if you have that I would like to know what that is too thank you let's go back all right stretch it out then so next i got to say um spokesman okay you can see what i'm saying the um, n y p a which tj is about to tell me what it is And Sergeant said they believed one fifty twos Okay, then I need to say Patrick stated that Boy, can you imagine that? There are no, he's not aware of any regulations that that keep people out of the airspace of a nuclear power plant <laughs> back in 1984, 85. Wow. That's changed. New York Power Authority. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. New York Power Authority. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. know these things 
I'm in California, where it takes more than a 4.0 to get us out of bed. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. New York State Police. Let's see. I This is also another thing that some people do last, and they hyperlink. I do everything as it occurs, and it's just my style, and it doesn't mean I'm doing it right or I'm doing it wrong. It's just the way I always do it. So I, near power three, I just do everything, each sentence, so it's complete to where it is. So like if I, if I keeled over right this second, somebody could pick it up exactly where it was. Okay. And just continue where I was. Everything's done as I go. But like I say, I don't want to follow anybody else's editing and do it exactly the way they do it because I'm sure we do it different. Okay. Is this right? Okay. The last thing I want to do with this article is. All right. Here we are. The. Oops, one S. I spelled it wrong again. I was looking. Okay, let's just let's just copy and paste. Just copy from what TJ just wrote. Instead of me trying to type this, because I am making mistakes. There's two S's in there, isn't there? Ah, you spelled it wrong. Oh. Wasn't me that moment. Spokesman for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, NRC. Thank you, Brian Norris. Said that they received the. request from that they have no but I think we're finished with this. Okay, so this is all from John Craig. Now, because these are separate paragraphs, I'm going to use, I'm going to put this in each each little Craig, Craig, Craig. So I don't put Craig on each sentence. I just put it at the end of each paragraph. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's read this and make sure this is right. One guard said. Oh. Says Cessna's 152s. Is that got a Wikipedia page? Mm. 
Okay. And if, I don't want to say inciting because I use the word citing right here. Story incident. Incident? I'll use incident. Somebody else can play with it if they don't like it. Okay. Oh, that's a teeny tiny little plane. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would be quiet. Okay. So let's hyperlink to that so people can go and look that up. See how my page changes colors? Um, there's a preference you have to turn on. Okay, so let's look and see what the preview, what this looks like. Ignore that. That opens. That opens. That opens. See how it says Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant, but the Wikipedia page says Indian Point Energy Center. I just changed the hyperlink so that it opens to the right page, but it says what was what it was called when it was in 1984. Okay, so maybe this is done. And then down here I have the external link, the uh, FICA. FOIA boyka request from that um, TJ just gave us here. But again, I can't cite it because it's primary source and stuff, but it should be there so people can look at it. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant, eh? Oh, I got to put this back over here. Are we done? Are we done with that? Yes, I think we're done with that. Yes, I'm not going to put that they think there's no such thing as UFOs. That's their opinion, blah, blah, blah. And done. Close that puppy. San Francisco treat. Okay. This is a book. What is it from? Nineteen eighty-eight, minimum wage raised for state employees to five dollars and thirty-nine cents an hour for all full-time permanent state employees. Yes, power to the people. No wonder they have clothing. I remember when I was working in nineteen eighties, and I was thought five dollars an hour would be. I mean, I could buy a house. That was like a big deal. Okay. Citation, next citation. Where is the article? Let's see what it says. Moscow. let's find it okay it is all right this is citation is moscow ufo believers search new york night sky and we don't have a page number okay but it's this guy named bowder B A U D E R. Can I search in this? Not some wide. Oh, it's right here. How did I miss that? This 
This is the whole article. Let's put it in here for you guys to look at. <sighs> Getting there, you guys. I'm going to save this. I can write whatever I want in the edit summary. This is my my sandbox and I'm saving it because okay so that might be it for the Indian point power plant sightings that might that might be done we should be getting closer to the end because how much more could there possibly be okay so I need to read this and I put the link in there if anybody else wants to read it this is from 1988 Ha! Huh. Editor's note. The government years ago gave up its search for unidentified flying objects, but not to worry. There are still believers who spend nightly vigils on the lookout for aliens from other planets. One of the favorite UFO hunting grounds is the Hudson Valley north of New York City. Here's what happened there on a recent autumn night. Okay, David Bowder. But this is 1988. So I don't know if this is going to have a lot to do with the article of uh, the, the 1984 incident. They might reference it just slightly, but let's see if it has anything to do with what we need. And it is, that's fascinating that they say in 1988, the government's given it up and people still believe. Fascinating. Okay, let's read this thing. I'm not going to read it out loud. You guys can read it too. I'll make it bigger for people because I can. Oh, here's that guy again, Peter Gersten. Didn't we talk about him? Isn't he mentioned somewhere? I do. I remember that name. Why do we have his name? Why is he in here? There he is. According to the Freedom of Information activist Peter Gersten in the summer of 1984 and his organization Citizens Against UFO Secrecy, that's the guy. He put in a whole bunch of uh, FOIA requests. And he's the guy who said that that they tried to photograph the object, but it had avoided being filmed. That's it. I thought the name sounded familiar. Okay, never mind. These poor people, then they say any day now, any day now, it's going to happen. Well, this is the 1980s. This woman's been looking since 81 from her New Jersey home. Hundreds of times she's seen unexplained and, and did she say aliens? She claims to have seen aliens and dozens of unexplained lights. She's driven this field to this field from her New Jersey home hundreds of times since 1981 in the hope of making contact again. The mothership was here. They used to be several more of us waiting. Okay, lady. Hey, mom, let's go down to the UFO and see if the mothership's here today. Oh, she says it's a joke. Okay. You never know. This is in print. It's hard to say. Ah, the aliens whom she suspects are building an underground base in Hudson Valley don't seem to like clouds or rain. Mm, they can fly all the way from, from wherever they're flying from, but they don't like clouds or rain. Philip and Bar in Bergodo, author of Night Siege, the Hudson Valley. Okay, so he's the co-author to this um, 
for some reason we don't have him on here we need to put him in here because we saw that what's his name in burger bigger in I I M B R O G N O. Come on now. Okay, so don't anybody freak out because what you're seeing on my edit screen is just that. That's all there is. It's because. <laughs> I don't want any of my editors doing what I just did unless you have enough skill to understand what you just did. I opened this edit thing right there and I just changed it really quick. But I tell all my editors, do not ever use that. Only use this edit up here because it'll open up the full page and then you got to find what it is that you want to do, which is down here. See, right there. Don't want people hitting that small edit button because it just... Like you open it up, it's it's only going to show you part of a little bit, and you're gonna you're gonna get yourself confused. So don't do that. Don't do what I just did. Everybody just ignore what I just did. Oh my God. Erskine, who has set up a hotline telephone number for UFO fanatics to keep up on the gossip, says he enjoys the mystery and glamour of UFOs. And then came the internet. He's offered a reward for the mysterious group of pilots. He belongs in the government conspiracy camp of UFO followers, believing that secret military technology is being tested in the sky. Yes, 1988. Still not got anything. The legal assistant and flower child holdover. Oh my God. An abduction volunteer. I want to bring trinkets to trade because I want to make friends when I go on board. So she wears jewelry with trinkets on it. Like they can't, the aliens can't go and just get their own. I mean, I would think this is a Poe, but it's not a Poe. Flash of her camera at shrubbery. Shrubbery. Hoping others notice the particles in the air she sees during the brief burst of light. What she claims is angel dust looks suspic suspiciously like pollen. It was the only unusual sighting of the night. Is that really? Oh my God. Okay, so this article has zip, nada, nothing. It has nothing to do with the article. I don't know why it's on in there. It has nothing to do with the 1984. Thankfully, we do not have to use it. So I can delete it. Just take it out. Or I can hide it. Now, I got to remember how to hide it, but let's go and look it up how to hide it. It was... um. Gulf Breeze UFO incident. I, this is how I do all my editing, you guys. I don't want to have to remember too much. So I will just go to a page I've already done work on and I will copy how 
how it's done. So this says unused. And then I end it with this tutu like that. So I think this will make it all turn green. Let's find out. Um, unused. And then I follow it up with this. This is this should turn it green. And what it should do, yep, I made it all go green. What it should do is it should make it so that, that people who are editing the Wikipedia page will see that citation there. But the people who are reading the Wikipedia page won't see the edit there. And the reason why we do this is because we can show anybody who's hoping to rewrite the Wikipedia page that this page isn't, this page is, we've tried looking at the citation that comes up in a search and it doesn't have what we need. So I need to take this out up here where it says Moscow. Whoops, I guess not. Okay, so Moscow's out. So it should hide that citation so we don't have to use it. But we're letting the future editors know that we looked at it. Here it is cited, but it's not there. See, it's not in the list anymore. Da, 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 which means I can delete it. Yay, we're coming to the end. Okay, what do we got over here? It would depend on what color paint. What are you talking about, Klaus? Probably pronounced I H M him bro. No, good thing I don't have to pronounce it. What's this? What'd you put here, Mark Patrick White? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, this is a way of hiding it. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. He's giving me this link right here. So if people who code, who know these things, which are not me, that you can hide your comments by putting this and then ending with that. And it then you could write comments. And the comments that are there are things that Wikipedia editors who are looking at the edit screen will see. But the person who's looking at the Wikipedia page, the normal Wikipedia page, won't see it. So yeah, Mark Patrick White is absolutely right. That's what it's an HTML way of doing things. And I just did it here and here. And the way I remembered it, because I don't do this often, is I went and looked at an old Wikipedia page I had edited and just copied the code because I knew it was done there. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Mark Patrick White. Okay. So close, but that's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay, back to the story. We have one, two, three, four to go. Let's see. Can we do this? We could do it. We could be done with this page. Don't. Don't. Okay, here we are. This is UFO Seekers. This is from the Evening News, 1988. Continued on 4A. Okay. This is, this had no author. So the Hudson Valley. Okay. So we're looking for. This one. Evening news. So anything we cite is going to be using. It's not here. Evening news. Okay, I can get rid of this. We've already used that. We've already used LaRue, gone. We've already used John Craig, gone. So this next one is the evening news. And both are capitalized. So crinkle, crinkle, our bar. Uncrinkle, uncrinkle. E D E N I N G. Okay, it's 
So let's read this over, you guys. Let me give you the link. Oh, the Indian Point incident? Are you talking about TJ, this new one, oops, it only mentions, are you talking about the one that, okay, I'll, I'll just pretend I didn't see it. <laughs> if you said, oops. Okay. All right, so let's look this over. Oh, it's Peter Gersten again. Oh, I think this is exactly the same article. This is the same article. Here's just a picture of him. No, it's not the same article, but it's very close. 83 and 84. So perfect. So remember how you guys said it's 84 is the name of the article, but we found that there's some mentions that it happened in actually in 83 also. So this is just another citation that that's talking about the years. Okay, here's a pilot. Spokesman for the pilot uh, for the airport said it's a group of pilots or pulling UFO fanatics by flying a course for formation. It's not illegal, but it's annoying. Okay, this talks about this woman who sees something scary. We already saw this. Christian set up a hotline telephone number for UFO fanatics. Keep up on the gossip. 4A. I tell you, I love looking at these old, old newspapers. Oh, we're way past 4A. 5A, so it's over here. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, this is almost verbatim what that other article said. Okay. Yes, we are brilliant. It's almost done. So let's do... Unused, evening news, same thing. I'm not using either of those. Bye bye. Yes. A new link related, but not a direct source. Let's see. What did you find? Oh, it's the same one I just I just deleted. Or did I just click on that? No, I just clicked on my own. Uh, okay. Ooh, the driver exerted electromagnetic effect on his auto and a physical effect on his body. Mm, I don't think that guy should be driving anymore.
Okay, what year was this? 1984. September. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure I want to use this article. This is a, this seems like it would be a good article. September 1984. It's mentioning the Gersten again. And the group is investigating a report by a driver who stated he viewed a UFO from his car. What was so unique about the report is the driver claimed that the UFO exerted an electromagnetic effect on his auto and a physical effect on his body. The researchers are also investigating reports that twice in June, security guards saw UFOs over the plant. Okay, now we've already seen this. I mean, I've already got that cited. Okay, more recently, September of 1984, Reported on, so the sightings were reported on Sunday and Monday. Seen was a large red or orange ball in the sky. <laughs> okay, could it be the sun? On Friday, there were three separate reports of a large cynical object with no wings, making no sound, and showing a light on the front and back. The reports are called into. While still researching these real UFOs, the identity of alleged pilot pranksters is still being sought. The re researchers are offering a hundred a thousand dollar reward for the identity. Which fly out of the airport and fly in a formation with special lighting to give those in the ground the impression that they are a large unearthly craft. They're just having fun. All right. Should we use this article? in our article is it giving us much more it's saying that there was a sighting of a red large red or orange ball in the sky and three separate reports of a large cynical cyclical no wings me okay but the thing is is these are i can't really put this under eyewitness because we don't know who the i these people are they're just claims same with the driver who says that his car exerted electromagnetic effect on his car and himself. Um, I don't want to put them under eyewitness because they're not even named. They're just stories told to these other people. Okay, so while researching these real UFOs, the identity of the pilot prankster is still being sought. The researchers are offering a $1,000 reward for the identity of a half a dozen pilots of small aircraft. <sighs> Should I put that under... US UFO research group response? As of September 1984, was or is? The pilots. Hmm. 
the identity of the pilots I mean, why don't they just go down there and just hang out at that airport if they know they're all coming out of that same airport? Just hang out there and watch them drive up. You know, sit off in the distance and you can see and take off and laugh. You can even kind of hang around and see if they, um, you know, joking about it. You could record them. I'm sure they have recordings in that day. Stormville Airport. Okay, so now I need to cite this. What do you want to call this? Oh, this is the evening news, but it's a different evening news. September 2nd, right? Yeah, so this is September. So... Okay, I'm going to put this over here so I can just do it quicker. Okay, there is no author of this. There's a URL. Okay, publisher is he is also me do this last night over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Reference is I'll use the word odd. Okay, so this is this is page one. So this is a little area I like to use, but I'm not doing it here, but this quote area. You can type in here whatever you want that's a quote from the article and it will appear in the body of the article. It's really nice. I like doing it. Um, when I learned, when I was in college, when I was in college, um, my degrees in history and what I did is we used Chicago style, which is a more of a format that's, that's, um, and it was really awful because I had all my college, you know, one professor wants it this way, one professor wants it that way. And we used to use Chicago, which is more of a footnoting kind of style. I, I sure liked it better. And so I used to, so I liked that foot, that kind of thing. Okay. So this article, this article, thank you very much, TJ, is gone. Yeah. Thank you, TG. I got um, Peter Gersten is a former director of Citizens Against UFOs. 
thing. I think I did that yesterday or maybe I did it before. Yeah, I did it today, but it was before you got here. It's right up. Um, not that guy. Here it is. Citizens Against UFO Secrecy. Yeah, so there it is. It was, I did this when I first sat down a couple hours ago. <laughs> but I come on here at six. Oh, it's three and a half hours. It can't be already. Good God, I haven't moved. Okay, am I almost done? I'm almost done, you guys. I am almost done with this page. I can do this. Skeptoid. All right. What does Skeptoid say? Okay, here's the Skeptoid article. Remember, you're never done with Wikipedia.
Okay. Very good references. Looks like he did a lot of research that some of the stuff I found, I found this and of course this, I have this Obscura, I don't know, should I look at this? Annoying these stupid ads are. Town of the town it, that is obsessed with UFOs. Gulf Breeze. Ah, oh, Gulf Breeze. I wrote that Wikipedia page about the year of oh, there. Oh my God, what a hoax. Okay, so this is all information we've already got. What a fun town. Trying to bring in revenue. Pine Bush is, in fact, the UFO capital of New York. Fun. Okay, so that's an awesome article, but it's not going to give us anything that we don't already have. Okay. I don't have a copy of the Great Hudson Valley UFO Mystery Discovery Magazine. So since I do not own it, and it is written by this guy who is um, a UFO 
guy, I I don't have access to that, so I'm not going to use it. This right here we already have. This is again with the pine bush locals we just read. This is about that guy in Bragadino. And this I already have. Okay. So what do we want to do with this article? This eyewitness revolt. Um, this is really important part of the eyewitness thing that can go in there. Okay, this, this we all have, oops, this is in that New York Times article. Okay, that's in the New York Times article. Here's the unsolved mysteries. Okay, this is a guy who's in 1983 was an air traffic controller. He tells unsolved mysteries about how planes fly in formation and in the tower it appeared just be one light because they're flying in a tight formation to estimate the size maybe two football fields wise okay in the area but I don't know if I can use this because it's not he's just saying that he saw this this is common in the air traffic controller world in the area let me think about that discover magazine The group called themselves the Martians. Okay, maybe I can talk about this at Discover Magazine. So I would cite Skeptoid because Skeptoid is citing Discover. Because I can't read Discover because I don't have a copy of it. I have to take Dunning's word for it. And because I would... That that's fine to take Dunny's word for it because he's it's his reputation that what he says was in Discover is in Discover because I can't check it. So that's fine as long as I say Discover. And then this is the opinion of Brian Dunning. And this is fine because Brian Dunning is somebody I can cite as long as I say, according to Brian Dunning, here's his opinion of what happened. And that's okay to, to cite. I can, I can do that. It's not my opinion. It is Brian Dunning's opinion. So if somebody has a problem with it, that they take it up with Brian Dunning. So um, this part right here where he says, Believers in the Hudson Valley UFO have acknowledged that the Martians were flying around, but have repeatedly argued that there was also a UFO and that witnesses could tell which was they were looking at. That raises an important question. This alleged UFO only existed at a time and place where the Martians were doing their nighttime formation flying. The UFO looked the same, behaved the same, flew in the same way, in the same place. Would that not be a staggering coincidence? Isn't it more likely that our human perceptional error is a confirmation bias 
selective memory and all the other cognitive phenomena that shape our perceptions played some role here. Personally, I think it does. So this paragraph can be in there as long as they attribute it. And that's fine. So let's use this eyewitness report here because this is um, this is a, an eyewitness report. He was 10 years old. Of course, he's talking about it years later, but it's still an eyewitness report. So I could quote it. Which makes the most sense. All right, so I'm going to move this over here so I can look at that. And quote it from there so we can get done with this faster. Eyewitness. Pick that out. Okay, in 2017. Let's just be clear that this is something that was uh, recounted from years ago. Um, what did we say? Brian Denning, um, research, paranormal researcher. I wonder if this person has a Wikipedia page because he's a director of a film. Let's see. Yeah, he wrote this film. Bar. Close, close, oops, close, 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 close. Susan, you're getting tired. You're going to make mistakes. Spelling your name wrong. Recky. His recollection, rec, rec, I can't even say the word, rec, rec, rec. his
So I need to make that clear that it's he's asking him about his remembrances. Okay, perfect. So I need to use a skeptoid. Right there. Okay. So some eyewitness reports right there. Perfect. L-E. M I A L E. You all done with that? No, almost done. I got Go two ahead. more. Good night, sweetie pie. Okay, so I have this. This is all in there already. Oops, you guys can't see everything. This is all in there already. This part that's in discover, I want to cite, okay, but I need to sum it up. I want to sum this up. Oh. So this will go So here. Brack Discover Magazine. Uh, it's like that. It has the, okay. So you have to do it like this. If you wanted to say something like this, like that. So I've typed in what the Wikipedia page is actually called, and then this is what I wanted to display. That's how you have to do it. Mm, what do I want to say?
Okay, so let's put this in with the skeptoid also, right there. And that goes back to the discover. Okay, so almost done. So now I want to put Dunning's Dunning's um, answer in here, what he says. Where did we put this? Not in the media. Not in the UFO research group response. I could put it here. Hey Siri, how do you spell phenomenon? Phenomenon. P H E N O M E N O N.
have it noticed that some of the some of the explanation Okay, I think I got it. Okay. Now, the only other thing I need to, to make sure I double check is that this, he says that this book was written by, he added another author. Here it is. Night Siege. 
1998, but I need to look this up because I have another author. Dunning has given me a different author, and I thought I looked this up. I did look it up. It's got the IS, I, IMDB. Okay, I don't want to get the Kindle paperback. Okay, this is the author. This author, Bob Pratt, P R A T T. Yeah, he's on here first. Bob Pratt. I think they said he was dead already, but um, I guess it was published after his death. Thank you, Dunning, for giving me the other author. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Okay, so this looks all good. I think I've used the, the Skeptoid completely. I can use that air traffic controller thing. Okay. All right. Deleting that. Done. Let me see this. Publish. Looking through hot looks. All right, almost done. What's going on with six right here? What's going on with that? Oh, it's just right there because I haven't used it yet. Okay, that's fine. Don't panic, Susan. Don't panic. You can do this. Okay. Back here. See how it says here, Dr. Stefan, whatever. Wikipedia is not allowed to use honorifics like that. So we would have to remove that. And people have gotten really upset about us removing the doctor, like we're taking away their doctorate from them. Nobody uses honorifics in Wikipedia. I mean, it's rare, but we can, but it's not often. Where, where's the Houston thing? Where is it in here? Hudson. Okay. Two times. Okay, this is just talking about the New York Times article. Making pilots and information, 
Boomerang, West Church, Cheshire Boomerang sightings. I wonder if that's another phrase used for So they called it the boomerang, the West Shirt boomerang. So let's do this. Let's add this in. And let's cite. DT Insider. Oh, gang. Crinkle, crinkle, our bar of gang. Uncrinkle and crinkle. Okay, boom, gone. Now this one, I'm not sure I should use. This is the debrief. Now this is not considered a reliable source. I don't think I should use it, but let's let's just take a glance at it and see what's here. Hi, kitties. Hudson Valley Flap. Open it up. More aliens would probably visit the Earth if humans weren't so hostile towards them. Second investigator accused the federal government of having crashed flying disks and alien bodies, insisting they were covering up information to keep it from the public. This is 1980s. Oh my God. Can we can we move on now? Boy, God, this is getting old. Fighting a publicity war with the military because the military officials sought to ridicule any minute reporter citing one well, they probably did. Okay, so we've got this Poughkeepsie journal article already in our article. The Heimlich had a, a was at a convention, and Heinick said that it wasn't Cessna airplanes that could do all of them. Okay, Pine Bush, New York.
New York Times bombshell article in December 2017. You guys, you got to read that 2017 New York Times article. Just because it's New York Times ain't all that. No. I've read that thing so many times for other articles. Okay, so this isn't giving us anything, but it did give us this link. And I've already seen this. People saw. Yeah, we already got that, so that's not important. UFO conference investigates. Electric eye door openers, electric eye doors opening and closing by themselves well is overheard at a supermarket near Pig Squill. They can only guess at what it is. A secret military something cut off. This guy again. Who agrees that some of the sightings are for these planes, but not all of them. Can so many people be wrong? Doesn't mean they're lying, dude. It could mean that they're just incorrect. He says, I don't know what it was, but it was a tractor trailer parked in the sky. Okay, so this isn't giving us much of anything. I'm not going to add one eyewitness. Okay, so this one, I'm going to debrief. I'm going to mark this out. It's not used. Almost done. I'm really liking this little gadget. That's very clever. Okay, these can go. This can go. Oops, come on, go. Yo no puedo. Que lastima. Okay. So that can go. Now, the last thing I have is I have a book. But it only has one paragraph on it. Okay, it talks about the Discover magazine. Pilots involved with taking the call in themselves as the Martians. So this is repeating what what um, Skeptoid has kind of said. I can just take this and use it as a secondary kind of thing. And I would put it Henrik says this is absolutely weird. Described it as absolutely weird. There's no logical explanation for it. Okay, I could write that right here. Book open. A lot of them.
Let me put Schaefer. Just take it out because I'm going to use it right now. And then I can also use it here where it was the dis discovery. Here, because he's backing up what the discovery magazine says. Okay. that bookmark how that's involved called taken to calling themselves the martians that can go back on my shelf and go away okay so that's it but then let's go fuss on it real quick because the way i edit i finish everything i do like I put all my hyperlinks, everything's in there. So it's done when it's done. So we can look at this, we can see we can take the in the media out. We had to get rid of all these little spots where it's got lots and lots of space. And these all open. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine they look like they all work okay and then let's look at our lead yeah let's just put a finalize on it and then we're set at it okay short description That's fine. Okay, so do we need to have this? And I really hate to have citations that lead. Let's just take this and put it down here because the lead doesn't have to have these in here. Well, I guess I've already got it in there, so might as well. Um, let's sum it up. I'm going to take this out. Should I leave that in? Okay, I can take this out. But let's hyperlink to these things here. So it's here. That there. Putnam counties.
don't don't panic you guys believe it or not i know what i'm doing okay done I just transferred what was up here in the lead, which is a whole bunch of place names and stuff like that. That I mean, we don't really need it. It's right here. So I just moved it down. Okay, let's sum this up in two sentences. Okay. It's my own words. Oh. Experts. UFO. Okay, how about I do it this way? Put that in a minute. Freeze. Explain. The lead could be the hardest part because this is almost the only thing anybody's ever going to read is this lead. It'll be quoted everywhere if it's quoted, if if anybody opens this article. So I'm going to try to figure out how to get it right. And it might be imperfect. Authorities explain the sightings as highlights. Hoaxing as pilots flying Cessnas. Is that how you Cessna? We're getting rid of the in the media section too, didn't we? I'm obviously tired. I'm not seeing it. I haven't moved for what three hours? How do you spell the word Cessna? I can't believe that is what's keeping me. <laughs> hey Siri, how do you spell? Oh, there it is. Never mind. Never mind. N E. Thank you. Don't mention it.
that how I want to end it? Some of, of the thousands of eyewitness reports, some were explained by the pilots. Some were explained by the pilots. Some were explained by the plane. I don't want to say by the pilots. It sounds like the pilots are saying that. Some were explained by the official report. Do I want to end it like that? Those pilots blanks out in type formation in order to hoax residents calling South Martians, UFO investigators. The thousands of eyewitness reports, some were explained. The I could end it there. Let's think about it. I mean, like I said, it's never over. If I want to think of something else, I can think of something else. Or somebody else can come in and do it. It doesn't have to be me. I got to get these bumped right up to the paragraph so I can get rid of all that space. It's weird how Wikipedia works. Yeah. Let's do a final read. How's it look visually? See how it bumped it right up to it, but there's still a space. See the beauty of it, the way I do it. It is more detailed as I'm working on it. It's, maybe some people would have a hard time doing it the way I do it with its Everything's done as I finish this. And as I do the sentence, I, I completely finish it. And it makes it so much easier when you're done. But I think a lot of people would find this really awkward to do it the way I do it. They go through and they write all the content and then they go back and they put the hyperlinks and they go back and do the author links and they go back and they do it like that. And our brains all work differently.
I love this this um, eyewitness report from this guy, Joe Maline. That's perfect. Shows it just I, I just love the way that it's in there. So glad Denning asked his friend. I put a word there. And word and. This is great. This is great. Hyperlinked. Everybody needs to be hyperlinked. Author linked to. Need a word. Write the word and. Let me look at this one more time. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to make it live. Let me show you how this is done. Some people find this very scary. So here's the page as it is. This is the current page. Here's the page rewritten. nine citations, much larger, that much. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take the current live Wikipedia page, and I'm going to go from here to here, and I'm going to delete it. Boom! I'm leaving this in here because this is what I left in there. I, I didn't touch this. I left it there. Then I go to my sandbox, open it. And I'm going to copy from here. To there, copy. And come right there, hit paste. Show preview. Brand new page, brand, brand new Wikipedia page.
publish. <laughs> That's how you create a new page. And I'm going to go over to the talk page where I've said hello. I'm going to take a look at this stub. Took three and a half. Okay, but I started six, seven, eight, nine. 8, 30, 8, 30, 9, 30, 34 hours. Um, okay, so in this point where I'm writing, I'm letting other editors who might be of interest know that how how what I found, what I didn't find, what I think could be improved. Okay, I'm going to tell them that I could not like photos, unfortunately. Um, okay, so I'd like to have had photos. Oh, Lordy Dordy. And So basically, I'm just letting the, like I say, future editors or people who care about this kind of research know what I'm thinking and why I did what I did and what I would have liked to have seen done better, but we're missing this and how I did look at a lot of other sources, but they were um, kind of duplicates of some of the other things. And again, we don't have to have every detail of, of any kind in a Wikipedia page. We want it to be short enough that people will read it and understand it as it flows through and um, kind of told with one voice. That's why it's best to have one person write the article than have people go in and edit these little bits here and there. That's not, that's not good. Um, I'm letting them know that I, I found all sorts of different dates, conflicts. And um, um I guess I'm just, it's also my way of saying, edit the article. 
this, I don't own it. It's not mine. I, I, I don't really care if somebody changed a lot of it without or changed things in a way that um, really changed the tone of it without having a discussion, which they need to do on the talk page. Uh, yeah, I'm have a problem with that. But if it's, you know, grammar, or too much of this or too much of that, fine, take it out. I don't care. Um, so I'm trying to leave it in a way that enjoy Um, I, you know, that I'm trying to let people know that I it's not something I am going to battle over or anything like that. I think two reliable sources uh, quoted the Discover. Okay, enjoy. I usually end with enjoy. Just my friendly way of saying it. Okay, so that's done. Now what I have to do, well, I don't have to. But here's my sandbox. See my sandbox? I'm going to go to my sandbox. And I'm going to do this. Delete. All gone. Bye-bye. All gone. Bye-bye. I feel like doing it. That was seven hours. So my sandbox is done. And that's how I do it. I like to fresh start like that. Okay, y'all, it's 11 o'clock here in California. And I am pretty much done. I have not moved out of this chair, as anybody will know. And I don't think I've had anything to eat or drink in that time either. So when I get focused, you know, you just get on it. So I really enjoy rewriting Wikipedia pages, especially ones that have to do with history. I like the UFO community pages. I think they're fascinating to watch it unfold. This happened and then this happened and they said this and they said that. Who are these players? Who are these different people who who um, were so prominent and uh, there was so much weight given to them? It just, it's, I, I, I really enjoy it. So Yes, I knew nothing about this 1984 incident. And that doesn't matter because I'm following the steps of how to edit Wikipedia correctly using citations that are reliable sources, thinking about what it is I'm putting in there, trying to take out my opinion, but still put enough in there that it'll make the page readable, the article readable, understandable, um, interesting without being gossipy and make it so that it's as respectful as I guess as you can get and I think by doing as much work as we did seven hours putting all that time and thought into it is a way of being respectful for that to that article so I mean I get a lot of flack from the UFO community heck I get a lot of flack from everybody but I think I by producing these videos where you guys saw me if well i know nobody's watching this but if you wanted to it's there and it shows every edit i made every um and i thought through it and i explained what i was thinking and of course somebody can come and change the article if they want to more power to them enjoy it but i was trying to make it so that this ufo sighting sightings has now a respectable presentable page with 
as much fact as we have without getting into um, unreliable sources, gossip, and sens sensationalism. And if somebody wants to challenge me on it, go for it. I, I, I don't see how they can do it, especially if they haven't sat here and, and gone through the process themselves. So if they don't like it, too bad. It's I'm not writing for them. I'm writing for the world of people out there who enjoy finding information on Wikipedia. If you don't find it reliable, it's not my problem because I'm only able to use the citations that are given to me. I cannot use the citations that are don't exist or or in somebody's email or somebody's opinion or what or a movie somewhere. I'm just it's not that important to write a book on this. This is just a project that I can do in a, under 10 hours. So with that said, um, I am a, I train, as you can see. I love training. I love writing and, and explaining and showing how to do it. To rewrite a Wikipedia page can be excruciating to some people, which is part of the reason why I'm I'm creating this video. If somebody wants to watch, they can see um, how I do it. And though everybody does it a little bit differently, in the end result is you should be ending up with a product that's about as the quality that I just produced right there. Whether they want to do it in other um, in other ways of doing it, you know, where they put in all the content in first and then they go back and they cite it and then they go back and add. I, I, my mind doesn't work. My brain doesn't work that way. I'm a completist as I go and I finish a step, next step, finish a step, next step, finish a step, next set. So it's when I'm done, it's done. I don't have to go back and do too much more. I can do a page recreation in under 10 hours. And that's the kind of projects I look for is under 10 hours, a few hours one night, a few hours another night, and that's it. I find it excruciating to do if you spend an hour or half an hour on it and then come back in half an hour on the next. I, Some people like doing it that way, but I, I just can't. I want it done there. Move on, move on.org. All right. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for the couple of people who come and hung out with me and did some citation finding for me. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I feel like I'm not here by myself in my house with my cats who are even, my cats are ignoring me. Mark's asleep. Pretty quiet over here, actually. Got a lot to look at. There's more stuff I got to do tonight. And um, I can't show you my Stat Badger stuff, but I got to get this all added into Stat Badger. So so it'd be um, uploaded so we can get there. We're almost at 160 million page views, which is phenomena. Probably within three or four days, we're going to hit 160 million page views. And I think, I think this page right here, the um, 1984 Hudson Valley UFO article is going to be to our 2,200th wikipedia page we've written it'd be nice if somebody who could read and write in another language who is an editor would take the wikipedia page i just wrote and translate it into another language that would be awesome i don't think this other one is in i don't think it is let me see let's see under oh it does it says language ah it's in afrikaans no no it's not in afrikaans it's in <laughs> let me show you what language this is? It's in this language, which is Vietnamese. There it is. It's in Vietnamese exactly as the other one. So it needs to be translated into the language. And I know this because it's here. See how it says right up here, one language. Ta-da! I can't do anything about that. So these are all fascinating. These these um, things over here on the sides of the article. Check them out. Go down here to the here to find out more information. 
Um, I remember one of the things I thought at the beginning was, is this really a UFO hoax? Is this really a um, 1984 hoax? No idea. I had no idea when I started this page that, yes, it indeed was a hoax. Uh, one of the discovery world, Brian Denning said, it's possible that these people didn't know what they were doing as a hoax. But yeah, it, it, yeah, you don't go in and practice formations like that and then turn on your lights at a certain time and then turn them off at a certain time and then call yourself to the Martians and then go and not tell anybody who you are if you weren't trying to hoax. I mean, come on now. All right. If they want to pretend that they were just doing it and they didn't know that the and the population, everybody was all like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing these Martian things. Anyway, I'm tired and I still have at least a half an hour, 45 minutes of work to do. Good night, everybody.